What's up everyone? Today there is a Husqvarna 150BT leaf blower. Um, I think this is a 50, 51, 49, uh, somewhere around that range. CC blower. Um, while there is compression, it's not the greatest. So that's not good. But um, apparently it doesn't run. The cover is right there. When I got it, it didn't have any screws. So I'm assuming the person tried to do some work on it. So I think what we're going to do first is I'm going to put you in the stand and take out this plug, put a little fuel down it, and see if it starts. And if it does, then we know we have a problem in the carb. If it does not, then we might have unfortunate other problems. But let's not go down that road unless we have to. So let me go ahead and get this started. Now, I put some two-cycle fuel down the plug hole. Put the plug on. I took the um, plug out. It was brand new. So I think someone's been in here before. Obviously, the cover was off. But uh, who knows what else they've done. I like to kind of pull up on the cylinder just to make sure they didn't try to take it off and look at it the exhaust. All that seems secure, so I don't think we have a problem there. The carb does have a lot of corrosion on it, though. No check. Seems a little odd, but it does seem to be running. Let me try full throttle. And that's why you buy the wall. Like what I'm seeing. Let's 
take off this muffler. Do you ever just have one of those really long days at work? Then you come in your garage to kind of unwind, and you realize your day of work kind of stuck with you? I thought I turned off the choke. I did not. Let's try it with no choke. Might be flooded. Definitely wet. Not seeing any spark. Let's have you look at it too. It's pretty bright in here, but let's see. I see no spark. Let me get a different plug. And to make sure I wasn't just missing something, I um, made sure the switch was off, or on, but not on off. It's fine. Nothing. I don't see a single thing. Um, that's not good. So do you want the good news or the bad news? Good news is I don't see any scoring. I wanted to check that before I even did anything because if there is, then it's really pushing the limits of what this would be worth to repair it. Having said that, it looks fine. The more I pulled on it, there seemed to be more compression that's coming through, so it could have been sitting for a long time, who knows. Um, now, when you own one of these, or a Red Max, when you buy parts for a Red Max, you literally get something that says Husqvarna on it. I bought, what was it? This half of the case, I think. Um, and it had a Husqvarna logo on it, and it came with a Red Max packaging, everything. So they're the same parts. Good news is on that is I can, I may have a coil for it, may, thinking it might be a bad coil. If I don't have one, I'll have to order it. But if I do, thinking it's a bad coil because I disconnected it, everything still is not coming through, so I don't think it's a bad ground. Um, it's two different plugs, so I don't think it's a bad plug. So right now I'm going to look at the coil. I'll test the coil. I'll show you how to test that coils. But we, to get that off, have to take off this entire housing. So I'm going to do that. It's just a whole lot of screws around. Take the back off. Folds down. Then take that off. Take the fan off. That can be a little tricky, so prepare yourself. But other than that, just a whole lot of work. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that and um, bring you back. Oh, man, I'm glad I was wrong. You actually just had to take the tank off, and I took the carb off to make it easier to take off this little cover, and there we have it. I was remembering my Red Max song. You know what? I just don't feel like that is right. And I was correct. It was not. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disconnect this ground and then I'm going to try it one more time just to verify it's not the ground, maybe there's a problem somewhere else. And then if it isn't, then we know we have a bad coil. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and if it is the ground, I'll bring it back. If not, then I'll just look for a new coil. Here's the coil. See this giant crusty layer of crap? I'm about 95% sure that's not going to be the cause of it, but just to avoid having to buy one and have to wait, you know, three, four days, but then not be able to work on it because it'll probably show up on Monday. Today's Wednesday. It'll probably show up like on, I don't know, Sunday night or Monday morning. Then not have being able to work on it again until the next week. I'm just going to clean this up. I'm going to go on the uh, flywheel side, clean up the magnets. You also need to check the magnets to make sure they're okay. I checked them, they are dirty, but the magnets themselves are still magnetic. Give it a try, regap it where it should be. We'll test for spark one last time. If that's not the case, then it's just a bad coil. So, I pulled this from the tank. That to me at the very least does not look like very well mixed fuel. It's probably a good 70, 80 to 1. So we might have more problems, but I put the plug in. I was able to detect spark, so I put everything back on. I, we may still have a problem with the carburetor, I don't know, or even the motor, who knows. But at least let's give it a pull, and if we need to, we could take the plug out and um, put some fuel down the plug hole. dry. This is still just two cycle fuel. Still nothing. Definitely getting spark. Just check, check that. Let's try this again.
Yeah. I'm about to call it bad. Even though I looked in the exhaust, I want to take a compression test. Check out the piston and see right there. I believe the ring broke, got crammed in there, and then just went in a demolishing ring. Um, I mean, everything else seems fine. Top ring actually doesn't seem bad, except for right there, of course, but top ring doesn't seem bad at all. To compound the problem, that is on uh, the transfer port. See right there, just scraped everything all up, and you could literally just feel a gouge. That's not going to buff out. So, if we're going to fix this, we're going to need a cylinder and piston. Finally, got the kit in. A little older, not much wiser, but I'm gonna put this clip in before we do anything because this is gonna be the end of the engine. That's the exhaust port, but when I'm looking at the exhaust port, it's gonna be like this. Yes, so I want to put it at the back end. That's just gonna make our life a whole lot easier. One thing I do like about Husqvarna kits is these clips are so much easier say that as I'm struggling, of course. Okay. I'm going to struggle more. There we go. Now to make sure, there we go, so that one's in, let's put this on the machine, do some rings, there's a pin, so you just want to make sure you line up the grooves on the pins, it's not too difficult, just make sure you don't break them. There we go. Takes a little finesse. Now, unlike some of them, these do not have a ring order. Just make sure you put them on the right way. When you buy this kit, don't get the cheap one. There is a knockoff one for the piston. There is not a knockoff one that I can find, at least not very easily, for the actual cylinder. So the cylinder is a legit Husqvarna, just like this one. It's just better that way. I've noticed there's no such thing as a good Husqvarna aftermarket kit. It just is not. At least not for this. Okay, put it on the machine. The fun begins.
I oil the inside of the piston, not the rod, but the inside. Oh, little buddy. Let's just get rid of this little guy here. Okay, I'm just gonna push it forward, put the clip in, and we'll put the cylinder on. So, I apologize in advance, but for the noise, but apparently it's laundry day. So I put the piston rings over, now, I, you also want to make sure that when you do this, you put the gasket in. Now, this kit came with the whole thing. That's why I like this kit. Um, if you don't, you're definitely going to need a new base gasket, and you're definitely, um, like I said, new rings and all that. In addition to that, also got a new carb, because this one is, yeah, and in that carb, uh, I probably don't need it, but it comes with a new gasket as well. So right now I'm just going to replace the carb, just put the new one on. That's not that difficult. Put the screws back on, put the cover back on, the muffler and all that, and we will test it out. Now it's really hard to show, that's why I didn't do it, but when you put this on, what I do, because you can't really put a spring uh, ring compressor on there, how are you going to take it off, you know? But you could either put the ring compressor on and then put the piston in just enough where you could put the piston around the actual rod or connect it to the rod. I chose to do it the other way. So when I put the rings in, I, with my fingers, I compress them, push it down till the, the cylinder is basically holding it in place, and then I do the next one. You don't just want to push because that's how you break them. So I'm going to go ahead and get it all done, and then I'll be right back. So I did forget to mention this, but I'm going to be putting the, the screws back in, and I want to use some thread walker. Now this is removable, it's not the best for this application, but for whatever reason I can't find my other one. So you know, it's better than nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and put some thread walker on it, just a drop and then we will go ahead and put it on. That's just going to prevent it from ever having potential problems with um, you know, coming out, because what will end up happening is one of them will come out and then the base will start to come off and then the one side will start to crack. And then you have to buy a whole new cylinder. Potentially, you know, even though everything could just break, like it could just cause an imbalance and then just pretty much a total at that moment. So put some thread walker on there to make sure that does not happen. So it came with a new filter. And this is a sponge type. So what you want to do is you want to take a little oil. This is WD-40. You can use motor oil. Any oil, really. And just put a, not like a soaking amount in there, but you do want some on it and just kind of work it in there. Because the sponge itself will, you know, block the big pieces, but the oil really encapsulates the, the dirt. So I'm gonna put the new air filter in there as well, and then we'll test it out. So, what did we do today? We put it all back together, put the, pretty much everything that's ready. We went from having no spark, finding out we did have spark, because it was a bad plug if I remember. And to be honest, it's been like two weeks ago since I started this. The mail is taking a horrendous amount of time. Put it all back together. Now, we should be good to go. Um, has good fuel in it. The uh, carb is primed, installed. Let's see what we can do.
might need to adjust that idle a little bit. Or it helps if you see a little bit more, huh? Just a Phillips head. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this carb is a generic one, so the jetty might be off. I might have to fix that. I don't want to like really rev it too high because it is freshly put together. I don't want to run outside for about 10 to 15 minutes just on idle. Just kind of let everything wear in together, kind of just figure out where it needs to go and just kind of break it in. That's basically what I'll be doing. And then once it's fully warmed up, the assembly oil or aka marble is actually burned off and ready then I'll rev it up I'll bring it back and I'll we'll see what you can do I would it sit outside for about 15 maybe even 20 minutes what a idle and then I went around the my backyard blew some random things like dust and leaves and whatnot that for pine needles really and it's adequately warmed up let's see what we can have choke. I'm actually really surprised that that jetting in the carb was right. That usually doesn't happen with these types of carbs, but um, apparently I got lucky. I'm going to keep that one in mind for the next time. It's something that I like to do if you find like a good aftermarket one, because they're not, their quality is pretty far apart from each other. Some are really nice, some are really garbage. But that's a risk you take. It's like a lottery ticket, except usually just like the lottery you probably won't win but in this case i did so i'm happy okay well if you like what you see keep watching definitely put a thumbs up and subscribe i'll catch you on the next one have a good night